Okay, so this is going to be a series of tutorials built on someone else's tutorial, in a way. Um, and I think this will be helpful as an introduction to uh, using typography, just a little bit. Secondly, uh, introduction to using uh, screen buffers. Um, the idea that we can create an image but not draw it to the screen, but still access it or analyze it and, and use it in different ways. And then uh, um, the third thing will be how to use the get function as far as um, an image so that we can uh, test the color information which is on the screen or the color information that's um, in the graphics buffer. Okay, so for starters, um, there is a tutorial at creativeapplications.net uh, called Generative Typography with Processing. And these are great tutorials, uh, and some of it is um, straightforward and easy. Some of it is pretty complex. Uh, Abnon uh, Oed, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he's posted several tutorials. He's written things about processing. He's fantastic. Um, but he's also exceptionally skilled and so that he writes code that is highly efficient but sometimes hard to decipher a little bit, especially if you're new to processing. So I wanted to pick up on some of the base files and explain those and um, see if I can fill in some of the gaps. So uh, if you're looking at some of his example code, um, I'll post a link on Scholar for you to check out. Or you can just do a Google search for uh, um, creativeapplications.net. Uh, typography tutorial or processing tutorial and you'll find this. Uh, and there's a bunch of stuff that you can uh, file, stuff that you can download, uh, processing sketches. So what I've done is, uh, this is very similar to what he had as kind of a, a default uh, sketch. So I've rewritten some of the things. Uh, I've added a font object um, and created the font here. The rest of this is the same, with the exception I kind of reordered it. So I went background fill and then all the text functions together just to uh, clean it up, in my opinion, and then um, background and, and image. So let me just show you what this looks like and then let's explain what's going on here. Okay, so here is the uh, uh, Sova logo. Hope I'm not running off the edge of my screen capture here. Um, and uh, all I'm doing is drawing some text to the, sc the screen. Now, this create graphics uh, object called, that I've named PG, it is being created here in the setup. And then once it's created, I'm drawing it to the screen with image. Okay, But if I comment that out and just rerun that again, it doesn't show up. But it's still being created. It's kind of off in the background, not, you know, it's in a buffer. It's waiting to be accessed and drawn to the screen, or it's waiting to be analyzed in such a way. So if I were to use a um, get function to figure out what that, uh, what's back there, um, I could do that. So we'll do that in the second part of this little tutorial. For starters, let's just leave that image on so we can see it. All right, so um, most of these we've used before, background, fill. Uh, we have not used the text stuff, so this is there'd be too much stuff to cover if I went over all the, um, the details of using text, but we created a pfont object just like we would do with p image or p shape. Instead of loading an image, we created, uh, oh, sorry, instead of loading an image, we created a font. So I just grabbed one of the system fonts. There's two different ways to create uh, fonts and processing. Again, look at the tutorial on text in uh, at the processing.org site. Um, so we've, I've set the size. I've uh, told it to align with center. I told it that I'm going to use the font called F at 200 size. If I did not do this, processing would just use a default font which is fine. I wanted to just set this up so that if you wanted to change the font, you could, and, and I changed it to Arial. If I turn this off, let's go ahead and click on this so you can see it a little bit better. Let me uh, minimize this over here. Okay, so uh, pay attention to the font there. 
if I comment this out and rerun that, you can see it's slightly more curvy, and I'm no font person, so I have no idea what font this is. Is it Helvetica? I have no idea. <laughs> Mono something or other. Um, let me turn that back on. So you can see now I have a font that's uh, very smooth. Um, uh, it's just a different font. So you can put any of your system fonts in here and use this, or I think most all your system fonts, and processing will convert it and use it. So text font is a way of saying, hey, use this font, and this is how big it's going to be. And then we finally say text, just like we would say image. Here we say, here's the text. Here we would say, here's the image. And then we define where it is in space. So here we're just saying it's half of the, the width of the buffer and half the height of the buffer. Right? And then on either side we have begin draw and end draw. So this is just uh, these bracket what we want to go onto that buffer object. All right? So we've created an image in essence, but put it off in the background. That's what we're, we've done here. We don't want to draw this to the screen, but we want to be able to maybe draw points that would be at the location where there are black pixels, or something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's do a little test. So one thing we want to do is um, get the color from the buffer, and then um, the front, let's see, let's do this. Get the color from the buffer. And I think pseudocode's gonna help us out here. The color that is under my cursor. Set that color. And then um, color is that. As fill color for uh, ellipse. All right. So that's our little bit of pseudo code that we're going to use here. So the first thing we need to do is get that color. Right. So I get and set the color are kind of the same thing here. So let's just start right here. So let's say color C is equal to um pg.get now to get the color from this image i need to know where i'm going to like where is that position going to be right so here i'll say mouse x and mouse y right so that gets me the color I'm going to say the fill is that color. And I'm going to put an ellipse in here. And let's make it uh, the width divided by 2. And let's, uh, how big's my little thing here? 600 by 600. So let's make this uh, 400 or 450. And let's make it 100 by 100. And let's see what we get here. All right, so I have an ellipse on the screen. And you can see as I bring my mouse, right now it's just reading whatever is underneath the mouse. That's what get mouse x and y says. So as I click on it, that, or as I look through here, it's um, I see white and I see black, and you can see it's obviously covering or coloring um, the ellipse. But let's go ahead and turn this off. All right, so that buffer, that object is still in the buffer. It's not being drawn to the screen, but because I'm telling it to analyze this image, you can see that as my mouse rolls over where Sova would be, I'm getting black as my color. All right, so it's really important as you're working in processing or any code like this to break it down and do little tests. Like the first thing is, let's figure out if I can just get the color from the screen, or let's figure out if I can just get this thing drawn to the screen and then grab its color. Um, any of those little steps from here, we can start making this a little more complicated where we would maybe create a whole series of 
uh, dots on the screen or ellipses on the screen and then analyze every little point that that lips is uh, over and give it the color fill or stroke or something like that that's related to that uh, that color. All right, so that's 10 minutes. I'm going to call this part one and I'll move on to part two.